6.30, no, 6.31 actually. We have a quorum, we'll call the planning board meeting to order. Uh, this is an open meeting and the members of the planning board that are in attendance are Joe Zagrodnik, Jim Maximoski, William Dwyer, Mike Sarzinski, and Mark Dunn. And we, you know, okay. And the meeting is being recorded. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, we have Mr. Parmar. Surprisingly, you have two Parmars on here. They're not related for once. Okay, well, then we have <laughs> I, Mr. I Keyshore so Parmar. <laughs> I, don't think, I think this is the first. In my life, uh, yeah. Um, so I sent over some updated plans for 237, 239 Russell Street. Um, that's a town place that we're building, town place in suites. Um, we update the plans to reflect that we want to keep a current structure that's on the premises. That's the storage shed. The original plans that we submitted that were approved uh, called <laughs> called for us to demolish the shed and build a new one um, in a similar position. Um, we realized that doesn't really make sense. The sheds are the same size that um, we might as well just keep it for cost reasons. So we had to update the plan slightly for that. Um, it does open up some more open space, but not anything that changes the percentage. We're still over, we're at 26%. Uh, the other part of the plan that we changed is the propane tank. We went to a larger tank. It was situated under one of the parking islands, but it's now in a green space on the south side of the property um, underground. Okay. I mean, as far as the propane tank being the, that, that, that's good. It's underground. I mean, as long as the uh, fire department is good with that, then we don't have any really strong opinions of that one. Yeah, I, I did send over the plans over to the uh, CONCOM, the, um, Tom, Tom, I sent it over to you and I sent it over to Mike and Evan at the fire department for them to review and they were okay with it as long as we pull the correct permits and pull up the bollards. Okay. Do you have the uh, drawings available to share? Yep. One second. Okay, just give me a second here to get you to open it up. Okay. So this is um, basically site plan submittals. Let me go to, this is the old site plan. So let me make sure, yep. So essentially I'll zoom into the section we're talking about. Um, right here, I don't know if you could see this area, that's where the original propane tank was. Um, we're now moving it. This is actually green space. It's an overlay of the old parking. Um, it's now moved over here. And this structure right here, the storage shed is remaining. It said storage shed to remain. Um, before it was being demoed and a new shed was being built, um, but it was going left to right and not um, up and down as shown here. Okay. Storage sheds about the same size from the old to the new to the leaving this one. Yeah, it's actually a slightly smaller. Um, I mean, slightly. It's nothing that moves a needle uh, in terms of the open space percentage. We're still at twenty six, okay. which is above the twenty. Um, it's probably like a quarter to half percent higher. And you haven't impacted your snow storage or anything like that. No. No. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Berkshire Design is the one who, you know, we had him take a look at it, make sure all the calcs are correct and within the limits. Okay, so what's the date on this plan set? This one, let me go back. Uh, 
Looks like June twenty eighth. Okay. Yep. So I'll make a motion to amend site plan approval per the plan set revised June twenty eighth, twenty twenty four. I would second that, Mark Dunn. Motion and second. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. Mark aye. Dunn. No, I mean, roll call vote. Mark Dunn, aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximowski, aye. Sarzinski, aye. Joe Zagrodnik, aye. Motion is unanimous and passes. Very good. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you can stop screen sharing now, good. Yep. Okay, next up we had Mary Campbell. We have Mary Campbell. Hello. Um, I live over on Mount Warner Road and um, I'm a licensed riding instructor and I'm getting my stable license. And I wanted to um, just start a little horseback riding business kind of farm experience thing. I'm also getting my master's in mental health counseling. so with the hope that eventually um, I can do some sort of um, animal assisted therapy. Um, and so just want to make sure I follow all the regulations. I don't know if I need a, a business permit or yeah. Yeah, you because you're under five acres, you're not agriculturally exempt, unfortunately. So you'll need to go for the home occupation, home business, which is a special permit. So um, if you just look at the zone bylaws, it'll kind of step you through it. But if you've got any questions, you can call Bill or myself and we can email you an application. And typically from the time that you apply um, to the time the public hearing is about a month. So mm -hmm. you pay for the price of the public uh, notices in the newspaper and the mailings through your abutters. You'll need a, um, a butter list within 300 feet of your property perimeters, any abutters yeah. within 300 feet. You can get that from the assessor's office. And the majority of the cost is typically um, going to be the adver legal advertisements in the Gazette. And that is typically running between everything else. You probably end up paying somewhere around $500 for the uh, public hearing. And about the 400 something of that is the legal notice. So Could we just get the address? That's yep. how we track. It's 139 Mount Warner Road. Okay, thank you. Is that the old Grolinski's house? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, the, that owned the Army Navy store. Uh, so, no. Or his name was Jeff. No. no, maybe not. Okay. What does it look like? Take the bottom of Mm -hmm. So we do ask that the application be filed at one of our meetings. We're good here tonight. So uh, we're good. we will be here in two weeks. Um, okay. The section you're looking for in the zoning bylaw is section 20, home occupations. Okay. And I just bring a filled out form to the meeting? Uh, yes, with the abutters on either mailing labels or envelopes. Yeah. T we typically, we, we, we can email you the application. Just e email planning at hadleyma.gov, and so we'll have your email. And then Bill or I can email you the application, which is pretty much simple name, address, where it's going to be, what you're going to do, size of the lot, you know, basic information. Mm -hmm. And you can drop the um, a a list either on mailing Check labels or on envelopes and the planning board slot at the town oh, hall yeah. once we do everything and, and get all the information. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, okay. next up is Emily Lampert. Evening, everybody. Let me just share my screen. Um, so this is a site plan amendment in regards to the Skinny Pancake Restaurant at 379 Russell Street. 
Um, we had previously gotten approval for a redu reduction in parking. We were taking away three parking spaces in order to add the new cooler and patio out back. Um, the landlord has come back and asked that we only remove two parking spaces. So we've had to modify. Um, this was I sent in last week. We basically just shifted the cooler over to the left a bit and also made it quite smaller. Um, and we've reduced the expansion of the patio to add back in one of the regular parking spaces at the rear. Um, every other aspect has stayed the same and we're still well over our required parking area. And you'll still have the trash receptacles and the things that you talked about out there? Yeah, the trash receptacles staying there, plus the shed that was storage shed that was approved with the last site plan. Um, every other aspect uh, is staying the same. I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for the adding back of one space. I would second that, Mark Dunn. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, roll call vote. Dunn, aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximoski, aye. Sarazinski, aye. Joe Sagrodnik, aye. Motion is unanimous. You're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. You too. Um, next up is a, a, a new visitor, except a busman's holiday visitor, uh, Matt Wischkevitz. Uh, you have planning board uh, business or do you just want to see what's going on? Uh, hi, everyone. No, just wanted to tune in to the discussion around the Hampshire Mall site. Okie doke. Uh, it, it may not be much of a discussion because we are um, going to be continuing the um, affordable housing trust fund uh, meeting to our next meeting because the chair of the board of the trust cannot make it tonight. Got it. You're welcome. Well, happy to tune in. Uh, and for those who which don't know me. Devitt's, which Wash Devitt's family are, are you given? I know a few. Yeah, there, there's a few. Uh, Dave Waskevitz, his son. Dave Waskevitz. So, and who's your grandfather? Who who's Ignis, your grandfather? Iggy. Iggy, okay, okay. Yeah. They finally, it clicks. <laughs> so, Matt is a uh -huh. graduate of Hopkins Academy. Uh, we've been in touch sort of over the years. He's a professional planner for the city of New York at this point. That's right. That's right. I've been a planner with New York City for about five and a half years now. Uh, and I help run our economic development unit. So just wanted to hear a little bit more about what the UMass students had come up with with the future of the Hampshire Mall site, knowing that uh, the, I've been following the news very closely around, around the bankruptcy proceedings. And uh, even though I don't live in Hadley, still concerned for its future. And uh, yeah, just wanted to hear the discussion, if any. Okay. Um, that brings us to Dr. Parmar. Yes, also a visitor. Um, I may have spoken to you, Jim, um, last week. Uh, so I'm a franchisee with a uh, brand called Seven Brew. Um, we were interested in looking at a uh, site on Russell Street next to uh, Jiffy Lube and just wanted to understand sort of the, you know, the proceedings here. Um, what would be required and also want to just introduce myself. I live in Connecticut uh, with my family. We're going to be opening um, at least two of the locations here in Connecticut and then um, uh, would be interested in Hadley, Massachusetts area. Yes. Seven brew, you said? Yes, yes. It's um, it's a drive through only coffee business um, with with other drinks, teas, uh, shakes, uh, things like that. If you've ever been on the West Coast, um, they have a similar concept called Dutch Bros. Um, and so it's very similar. Uh, we, we're in 27 states now. 
um, and and gotten very very positive traction across the East Coast, starting from Florida and moving our way up. Um, and so I think it would be a great addition to the community. Uh, we don't do menu boards. We don't do intercoms. It's it's a somebody comes and greets the car uh, with an iPad and sort of takes your order, and your 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 drinks are delivered, hand delivered to you. So very different uh, concept for the Northeast. Um, and so, you know, just wanted to learn a little bit here and then hoping to, yeah, hoping to is, open is, up there. Is seven a, a numeric seven or spelled out? Uh, so the website is with the numeric seven, uh, but we have t-shirts with it, with it spelled out. But if, if you want to go to the website, it'd be numeric7brew.com. And the seven is a homage. It started to. It started in Arkansas. It's the original store that had seven drinks, uh, seven original drinks, and so that's where the name came from. Location again. So it's uh, it's right on Russell Street. Um, three. Four, it doesn't have an address. Uh, three forty seven Russell Street is a Jiffy Lube, and yeah. right next to that is then. Uh, it's the same landlord, and it has a open uh, lot there. Just to the west of just to the west. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Just to the west. Yeah. So you would be accessed from the mall side? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and Here. not a drive through. It would be like parking and then they come out. No, so it's 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 purely a drive through. The only oh, parking okay. we would have is for the employees. Okay. Um, and then it's purely a drive-through. There's it's a double lane drive-through, so we we focus on speed, getting people through quickly, no traffic jams, um, and obviously the experience that the Northeast has yet to experience. <laughs> where okay. where, where the parking, are coming the parking the requirements still apply? I think so. Yes, absolutely. Two, two for one, yeah. Absolutely. Even though you, yeah, even though nobody's parking, it's still two for one. Yeah. Yeah. Our our uh, building is 510 square feet. Um, so it's a small footprint building, um, and uh, we would certainly meet that requirement. But it's part of the mall configuration, so uh, it would not be a standalone. You're not buying the individual parcel. You're going to be part of the the Mountain Farms Mall. Uh, yeah, I think it's a separate parcel. The Jiffy Loop's on a separate parcel. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Dunkin' Donuts and the liquor store are separate parcels. Okay. Um, but they they're obviously dependent on the mall with cross easements because they don't have a curb cut. You're right. But we did have uh, someone came through within the past two years with a. Uh, uh, they're doing due diligence for the. Um. um for um, buying the, the Jiffy Lube. Someone bought a bunch of Jiffy Lubes. So that's the only reason I know it's a separate parcel. Yeah. But between the, um, you know, wh whatever Jiffy Lube has for excess parking on the parcel, you can use as well. Uh, just that the total building load on the parcel requires two for one parking to satisfy it. Yes. Yep. Um, okay. And we have a preliminary site plan that um, that seems to cover that as well in terms of parking. So we are always happy to uh, take a look at before you spend a lot on um, design drawings. We're happy to look at concept drawings. Uh, just come into the first part of our meeting like this, and when okay. you're ready to file, um, it is. Uh, site plan approval in our zoning bylaw, and there's another section on special permits. So you can take a look at those two. And um, again, you can get an application by emailing planning at hadleyma.gov. Okay, yeah. Would it help if I pulled up the preliminary site plan? If you'd like to. Yeah, I can pull it up here. So are you able to see the screen here? Yeah. 
So this is the preliminary thinking we're doing. Our building here is 510 square feet. This is an outdoor cooler right here, external cooler. Um, just in terms of the seven brewer design, we keep it external because different sites, we can move it around. Uh, the entrance- oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, yep. Storage trailer type containers are not permitted in a town. Storage contain, okay. I'll have to definitely look at that then. So if it was part of the building, then it would be all right. Correct. It's, okay. But it can't be a storage. Well. They can't be. A, can't look like a tractor trailer storage box. Oh no no! It it, it matches the um, it matches the facade uh, of the building. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The facade of the building. Sorry. Go ahead. No worry. No, that's good to know. Um, and so we have two lanes. You enter here, um, curve around. This is where you would the drinks are delivered. Our parking is established here just for the employees. No, nobody goes in the building except for the employees. Uh, trash receptacle here, and we did see there was a, you know, a creek water, uh, sort of a 35 foot uh, easement that we need to watch out for. Um, and then an escape lane as well, because sometimes uh, employees are delivering drinks here. So as they get their drinks, they can escape out of here and just it's a very fast movement through through the through the lanes. Because of your proximity to uh, that stream, uh, you will have to visit with the Conservation Commission as well. Okay, good to know. Um, we do share a uh, land use assistant with the Conservation Commission, but she's on vacation this week. But okay. uh, if you wanted to sort of introduce yourself, um, uh, her email is conservation at hadleyma.gov. Perfect. Thank you. Got it. And the Conservation Commission operates under a completely different set of rules. So for our purpose, uh, let's see, 510 square feet is actually below the threshold for site plan approval, but we'd want to know um, what the uh, what the other what the storage can uh, facility brings to it as well. Sure. Yeah. So our uh, our site plan approval bylaw covers everything from uh, this to the mall it's adjacent to. Uh, so not everything in the bylaw will be applicable to your situation. So as you go through it, just keep that in mind that we 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 can accept abbreviated applications if something is not relevant to your situation. Okay, that's helpful to know. Thank you. I must admit though, when the name came up as an MD behind it, I thought <laughs> it was gonna be a dock in a box kind of a situation. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, what type of physician? Yeah. Special. Yeah, I, I I did orthopedic surgery, uh, so very far from that. <laughs> and then no. uh, got got into got into business in healthcare, and then now I'm just going into other businesses. So, orthopedic surgeons were you any kind of an athlete growing up? I'd like to think so, but not not uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'd have had no scholarships tagged to it. Let's just say that. No, but many of the <laughs> orthopedic surgeons are ex jocks. So uh, I know, uh, I know. I'd like I I was ex U.S. Army, if that if that makes sense. That's all. I served in Afghanistan and uh, saw a lot of injuries before I became a surgeon. Uh, saw a lot of injuries over there, and kind of that's what inspired me to to go down that route. Yeah. Okay, uh, if you could stop sharing, yeah. please. Um, one more question, I guess, for the for the board. Would we have to see the entire parcel to make sure that they have their open space? Yeah, have... when when he applies, we will need a drawing of the whole parcel to make sure everything is met. Yes. Okay. But I think believe it's a standalone lot. Yes. 
So he's not going to have to show the whole mall or anything. No, no, I meant with Chippy Lou. Right. So the Jiffy Lube actually predates site plan approval, I believe. It was very early, uh, maybe back in site plan review. Um, we probably don't have much of a record uh, on that approval, but the landlord presumably will have some information on the parameters of what they have there and how much square footage they have to work with. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, next you. up is Ryan Little. Hey, how's everyone doing this evening? Good. So good. I am back presenting uh, Dave's Hot Chicken at 5 South Maple Street. Oh. Share my screen here. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. So uh, this is very similar to what was presented uh, a couple Tuesdays ago. Uh, we just got a little more clarification as well. And uh, I have some following slides I will also be presenting. Um, as we presented, the you know original structure um, had more peaks uh, to it. And we are presenting on boxing out the uh, that structure but using the existing footprint uh and also there will be no more outdoor dining everything will be dined in or takeout and we will be keeping the existing drive-through uh, that the bank originally had uh one thing i do want to um ask the committee uh that for the white led rope light uh either talking to our engineers and architects we can either put this on a dimmer or we can also have the cobe effect and almost have it as a downlight presentation. Uh, so it wouldn't be blinding to any pedestrians or cars driving past. Uh, would there be any um, recommendation uh, by the committee of which way we should go in our design for the rope light? I'm just kind of tossing it. I personally would prefer the cove to avoid upward you know, light pollution. Absolutely. That's uh, not a problem at all. We can, uh, if anyone else, if everyone else agrees, uh, we will uh, direct our design team to move in that direction. But by call, you kind of mean like an upside down U with a light aiming it down, correct? Correct. Okay. Just want to make sure we're clear on what you mean. That's all. Yep. You, you wouldn't see any visible light strip, rope, or light bulb structure. Uh, it would all okay. be. That, I, I, I agree with Mar Mr. Dunn. That's what we would like. Okay. Um, and then I know uh, one of the other topics I wanted to bring up today, uh, talking to the owner, we would like to keep the roof line actually as high as possible uh, and even forego a parapet if we have to. Um, we're one of the only mechanical units that would be on the roof would be our kitchen exhaust. We are now with, you know, a high ceiling and deck uh, that gives us more room to put uh, mechanical units within the space uh, and or leave the existing uh, condensing units on the exterior of the building. Uh, if you look at uh, the east elevation right here, you can see two condensers represented. Those are existing. Um, we are actually willing to entertain uh, reusing any of the existing mechanical and reworking any of the interior um, duct work and diffusers uh, just to make this as simple as possible. The only thing we would like to put on the actual roof itself uh, would be the kitchen exhaust fan. Uh, we would be keeping the makeup air unit inside the space as well. Okay, so all your condensers for your refrigeration stuff would be ground level then? No, we would still put the refrigeration, the condensers on top of the unit within the structure. Uh, we're gonna have enough ceiling, uh, between the ceiling height and the deck it would be almost 10 feet now. Um, so we we have enough uh, airflow and airspace in that plenum uh, that wouldn't overheat. So, so we, we basically where the where the flight rope light is is that would be the height of the flat roof, uh, if possible. Yes. Okay. And not to extend it above, though, it uh, seems to be almost uh, traditional that 
people will say, we're just going to raise the roof line a little bit. And all of a sudden the sign appears on the roof line. So uh -huh. just be aware that we've been through these uh, trials and tribulations before. Yeah, absolutely. I actually on uh, these next couple pages here, you'll see our actual signage package. Uh, you'll see on this rendering, our signage actually shrinked a little bit. Uh, we're at shrunk rather uh, to meet the 64 square feet. So you'll see that we it will be represented uh, a lot lower than three feet from that roof structure. Um, and then one more thing from or one more action item from the last meeting. Uh, if you look at the south ele elevation where our drive through is, is this um, kind of Greek mural. I know you guys wanted a more uh, accurate re representation of what they were going to paint on the side of the building. Um, so, and this is what they're going to want to do. The uh, owner has ties to the, you know, the Greek community. So he's kind of infatuated with the Greek uh, gods. A Greek, uh, a Greek god with a cell phone. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't shoot the messenger that's <laughs> well, i'm the but... greek i'm the greek I'm... yeah that's uh john he's one of the the gms representing um um dave's uh, chicken today so this is what the the actual mural would be um painted on the side of the building on the uh on the drive-through side so on uh and that's so, and that would be clever and is uh innovative as it is it still is a sign and it's it's going to be entered into the full statistics of a sign and i'm not sure if the rest of the planning board is going to approve something like this but uh we'll discuss that too yeah i mean if it's a graphic that you haven't done on any other facility if it's unique uh i i, I don't know that's open to debate that it's uh, artistic. Yeah, I don't know. If it's not, yeah, I think it has. I certainly think it has artistic merit. Uh, yeah, de definitely artistic. But def uh, we were on the the line with, um, or when this was discussed, being discussed with corporate. Uh, it is not brand specific, uh, and there's. I don't believe there's any other mural or uh, graphic like this on any other. Uh, well, in the past, those have a tendency to fail and, and fall apart and go in disarray because the uh, L.L. Bean had a picture of the mountains and a lake in the background. And eventually that stripped off in a section and they have to take it all down. Uh, like, uh, but this like is, uh, are we setting a precedent to the board? Uh, and all of a sudden, are you going to see these all over town? So this is what we have to be aware of. Okay. Okay. Um, so for the time being, would this be an offline discussion with the board? No, I would probably like to discuss it now and to see oh, you know, I, I, we don't want to let you go astray. Somebody may like it or somebody may not like it, but if all of a sudden this appears on uh, all the buildings in town or all the buildings in the mall or something like that, something will say, what happened? Uh, I thought we had some control over signs and artwork and billboards. I, I don't picture that as a sign. Um, but it calls attention. It, it absolutely does. Um, however, whether I like it or not is irrelevant. Um, viewing it from a zone bylaw point of view, I mean, it is it is unique. It doesn't appear to be something they use in someplace else. It calls attention to their building, which I'm sure that is their intention. Just like the yeah. L.L. Bean thing, that was to call attention to them. Yeah. Um, but it's not really, I mean, is it advertising? I don't know. I, I, that, that would probably be a, a legal this legal question that I don't dare go into. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, go because ahead. we've approved it before, and if it starts to deteriorate, 
and they want to put something else up, they'd have to come back to us and maybe just paint over, depending what it costs. I, mean, I don't know what right. something like that has any, you know, I, if they want to continue to maintain it, that's up to them. I don't, what do the members think? I'm inclined to think it's not advertising either, since it doesn't really tie into anything. And um, I kind of think that having uh, th that that's an awful attractive blank wall if you have some graffiti artists. Uh, we, know, I, we know we have some in town. Um, this is going to make it, it's going to take ownership of, of the wall. Um, and yes, it's calling attention to it, but so is painting it a different color. So uh, I, I'm not I'm not bothered by this one. Uh, we similarly with uh, uh, what was the one uh, uh, Taco Bell. Um, we did uh, go along with them putting up artwork that was not. Taco Bell branded. Um, you can just call it art. Yeah, that's what it is, guys. We have on, our artists come out of LA and all over the country. And um, there's been Dave's Hot Chicken, they do this all over the country. And I haven't heard of any uh, owner have any issues with the uh, paint or the, uh, you know, the art coming off of the wall um, anywhere around the country. And well, if it I did, I if you went into a couple of towns over in Williamsburg, Massachusetts, this would not be accepted. Or if you went into Vermont. Right. Or if you went into our village center, this probably would not fly. Yeah. It is attractive. It's going to draw people, you know, into the plaza, not only for us, but for, you know, for Popeyes as well, because I know they're next to us. You know, it's just going to be a draw, you know, bring to the building and into the plaza. I think so. Brings a little mm -hmm. life <laughs> to the building anyway, because it is yeah. plain, you know. Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey and there was a guy who, in his taste, he bought three different colors of sidings for his house and he did vinyl siding, red, white, blue, red, white, blue. He didn't make very good friends with his neighbors. His house looked like a flag, but you know, it's not a sign. Well, right. People do some stuff. I mean, you mentioned that right up the road in Whateley when they he, there was a gentleman that had a, a, a well, a couple person, I don't know if it was a lady or a man, man, had a house right alongside the mass the uh, Route 91 entrance going south in Whateley by the uh, I'm sure Joe and Bill remember this. He wanted to do something. The town denied it. He painted his house pink with purple polka dots. Yeah, big, polka, big polka dots had to have been six foot diameter all over the house. <laughs> and that was his way of snubbing his own town. Yeah. <laughs> the house has since been gone. But for the longest time, it was a pink with purple polka dots. Pink house with big purple polka dots. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I, I'm okay with this, with the picture. Yeah, I am I too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, are we looking for a way? What about this other oh, sign? You had, you had you had the sign you said. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. We have poignant, um, uh, very popular around the country with the uh, sign install. So here we're going to have uh, the main Dave's Hot Chicken. Um, horizontal um band on i want to say that was the north elevation uh and then the chicken head will be at our now main entrance which is closer to the parking lot closer to s maple street mm -hmm. and actually in a mislabel here number three is actually the pylon sign so so you'll see the extended footprint of uh the facade or uh, the raising of the roof you know, our size on uh, the horizontal sign got a little smaller. Uh, we're going to keep it at 30 square feet, um, roughly one foot nine inch, 16, uh, almost 17 feet wide. And the 
the the glowing sign is halo backlit right uh correct uh with uh yeah red halo backlit that'll pop and then we have the chicken sign uh which is not halo backlit this sign is just fully illuminated uh within uh with a red perimeter um, I don't, I'll go back to the design team. I'm not sure why we put in the goosenecks above it. I don't know if that is necessary. This will be our main entrance. Uh, maybe that's why. Uh, it's just, a, well, cause it has to be externally illuminated. You can't, you can't backlight it. So that must be why they're. Uh, correct. I believe this is internally lit. It's not backlit. It uh, can, cannot be internally illuminated. We don't allow. Oh, that. maybe that's they must have done their homework. Right. Yes. So then right. we are using the goose necks uh, right. to illuminate the sign. That makes more sense. Yep. How big is that? Is the circle? Uh, this one is just under thirty-four square feet. Thirty-three point seven eight. Looks like it's about somebody adding these up. Five. Yep. It's about uh, five and a half feet. Just under sixty-four. They did their homework. And then we got the pylon sign. Uh, this is closest to uh, South Maple Street. Is that an existing pylon or a new one? Uh, this one is existing. Okay. Yeah, there's two there, right? But you guys said we can only use one? Well, no, they're not. Bill said they're not grandfathered in because the uh, grandfathering had the two years had elapsed. Right. Am I misinterpreting what you said, Bill? No, that's that's correct. The bank's been closed for more than two years, so uh, the okay. use of this the the, the signs are considered abandoned. So Understood. they have to be conforming in uh, distance away and height and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, what would be the next steps to? So th there's actually two pylon signs on site. Sorry, I thought we were led to believe we were at least grandfathered into one, and the other one could potentially be a directional. Um, if that's not the case, what are the next steps to? Uh, well, well, what the, the, the if you have two two signs on site, I mean, you can't have a directional sign that's thirty square feet. No, we have one for the drive-through that's going to be directional. Okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, you know, we see with the, 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 the Google. Uh, hold on one second. <clears throat> Let's do this real quick. Yeah, we're still looking up three A one. Here we go. Yeah. So this was the the sign that was presented in the package. Oh yeah. Okay, that's the one with it with the uh, time temperature. With the time, Correct. Yeah. And then there's another one on this side of the building, which was not in the, the presentation. And we weren't sure what we wanted to do with it, if anything. Um, I thought it was discussed. This could be a, a directional, almost like drive through pointing this way or, I'm oh, sorry. So that's the other existing pylon. That was uh, not presented within our, um, presentation tonight but you you could have one of the two signs right. okay the, the directional sign that you showed just on the if you were just to your right of the screen on the, on the drive cord going into the drive through to the back of the building that would be your directional sign oops right i picked it up jim and it was to the right if you went back to this the third screen yeah oops <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. It's first time using a computer. <laughs> uh, uh, give me a second there. Where'd I go? No, you're at the foot of the ball. You're getting close. <laughs> Do this again. Here we go. That's the old. All right, so here's the drive through. Right. Pylon almost at the, the entrance. 
parking lot entrance. So you got this one right here. Hold stop, stop. Uh, we'll back back. Just a little bit. Back to your right. There's one on the right side of the screen. No. Correct. Yep. There's there you go. Right there. That's that's your directional sign. You'd be permitted. Ah, uh, gotcha. The one by the light bulb. Correct. Okay. And you probably have one coming out too. Yeah, you have one coming out. So you can, you're, you're allowed those two signs as directional signs. So that would be like drive through. And, and then you'd have to make a choice. Which are, the, which are the two pylon signs do you want? And the other one would have, you're only, yeah, you're only allowed one pylon sign. Okay. Because you lost the grandfathering. Gotcha. So we, could we, could we put a, a, a directional sign that says enter for the uh, drive through in the beginning, in the front of the building, the front of the parking lot? What you hit just in in the size that's there now. Yeah, John, we can only use the uh, the smaller one. Right, right. But could we I don't think there is one in the entrance, like that side there to your right. I'm sorry, in the um Yeah, that right there, you that's the well that's a two way entrance and exit the way it is right now. Right. So that would be one one pipe one directional sign, and then there's another one at your other driveway. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Right there. There's the other one. That's at the exit. I'm assuming that's an exit. Yeah, because that, that comes out of the drive through. Yeah, that yeah does. That's, that's coming out of the drive through. Yeah. That's the drive through right. exit. Yep. So, John, we're going to have to make the decision on which yeah. time. Okay, we're right. I get it. Right. If you want it inside the mall or out on South Maple. Which yeah, I believe with the on our presentation is um, out on South Maple. Uh, no, we'll, as, to the, as to the one on South Maple, it will have to be externally illuminated. Right. Right. And no time and temperature. Nope. So that would mean putting some kind of a gooseneck off the top of it, probably. Yeah, or a light uh, underneath nope. it. If that's right. that much money, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go back to the you know the drawing board on uh, not the drawing board, but uh, make the decision on uh, which sign would be the smartest, and then um, what we'd want to do for exterior uh, illumination. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, besides the pylon, is is the others, any other um, comments, well, questions, concerns? The two, the two signs you have on the building um, are within total 64 square feet. They are either backlit or goose going to be gooseneck lighting. And you should be good with those. You're good with the painting. So when you come back with your rest of the signs on the site, we can just give you the waiver and there's no appeal period. You could just go right back to the building inspector and get your permits. Okay, and you've, I believe we've already given you the stuff for the inside. That's that's the the exterior stuff. Correct. So, so that you can start doing, you know, Demo. building construction stuff. Okay. So, <clears throat> for your scheduling purposes, our next meeting is Tuesday, July sixteenth. Uh, and then Tuesday, uh, July is a five Tuesday month. So we will only be having the meeting tonight, the second, and in two weeks on the 16th. Um, if you can come back then, that's great. Otherwise, uh, August 6th would be your next availability. Okay. Sounds good. We will be back on the 16th. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Joe. I like the Greek God. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't. I just said I don't want to make a comment about that, whether I like it or not. I'm trying to I'm trying to remain impartial here. Hmm. It's just uh, <laughs> it's definitely different. It could be worse. So uh, the 
Next item was the joint meeting with the trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Uh, Molly Keegan, who is um, the select board member and the chair of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund was unable to make it tonight. So I am going to move to continue that, uh, to reschedule that for our next meeting on the 16th. July 16th. We need, a, we need a motion for that, right? Well, I think it just, just for the record. Um, if you're um, moving, I will second. Well, when are we going to open a we going to open the hearing first. Okay. Do we want to be fussy here? <laughs> okay, I'll I'll act as since I'm chairman of one, I'll just act as a temporary co-chair or vice chair, whatever you want to call it for this one, since Molly's not here. Um, we'll open the uh, housing trust fund uh, meeting, and members present are Joe Zagrodnik, Jim Axomoski, William Dwyer, Mark Dunn, Mike Sarzinski, and the others are absent. But that's that's a majority for the board. And Mr. Dwyer has made a motion to continue this hearing because the chairman can't, chair lady can't make it to the July 16th meeting. Do we have a second? I will second. Motion and second. second All in favor, Dunn. roll call vote. Dunn, aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximowski, aye. Sarzinski, aye. Joe Zagrodnik, aye. That's unanimous of those present in the meeting. We'll see you on the 16th. When would I? Uh, I would, uh, I was going to say to, uh, to Matt's questions earlier, uh, without going into a lot of detail, um, uh, Molly had talked to the new management company at the mall. Um, so she can report on that. Um, I don't think any of us were able to attend the um, the planning studio, except I think Mark was able to get there for a while. And I um, did go to one of the reviews, yeah. And Molly went to both of them, so um, she would have more to say about that. I did ask her if uh, she knew if any of it had been recorded, and I don't think I have a reply from her on that. Um, I don't remember any uh, recording equipment. At... I don't know if they even have any images of the display panels. Um, so hmm. uh, again, we're we're kind of in the dark there. Although Matt, to uh, interestingly, one of the options we offered the uh, uh, the program was uh, a study of Railroad Street. <laughs> Which Matt had done as a oh. uh, as a studio right, project right. of my own, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some seemingly abandoned property there that would just out of curiosity. I I I know you sent me I, I but I, I don't know exactly how I saved it. Do you still have whatever you did? I do, I do, and I'm happy to circulate it with you yeah, and, and the so rest of the board. Just, yeah. If you just send it to me, um, the, the only change in the email is we're now at .gov, planning at HadleyMA.gov. Um, yeah, and Matt, just uh, by the way, you you brought up something about the, the Pyramid Mall and the uh, students at University of Massachusetts and their proposal. This is the third proposal I've seen by University of Massachusetts. It seems like this professor recycles that every th four years. It's so, a great case study. Uh, that's, it's a case study and you don't have yeah. to do a lot of homework. And, uh, and the pictures were, were in the Holyoke Mall for the previous two. Hmm. Uh, uh, but uh, it's just interesting. Yeah, I once the concept got, gets out there, they, they they have a tendency to bring it up and up and again and again. Gets better well, every time, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it is, <clears throat> but uh, from from afar and as as someone who grew up in town and cares a lot about about Hadley and my parents still live still live in town, my family's still there, and I'm back every couple months at least. Um, I'm happy to 
on a volunteer basis do anything I can uh, with regard to that site because it is it is important to the future of the town. Once again, Matt, I, I always say development used to follow rivers, Adley. Then it followed railroads, open up the West. Now it follows sewer lines. The <laughs> essential part of this is going to be, is there sufficient sewer capacity to support what people want to do there? Right. So that's the... Uh, and uh, well, has, 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 Have the banks have foreclosed sold it to anybody or the bank still own it? The bank bought it at foreclosure. Yeah, but so they haven't, you don't know what anybody wants to do there. Exactly. Maybe exactly. you don't know what anybody wants to do. I mean, I think if you want to put apartments there, it'd be, it'd be better off tearing the thing up and putting something else up two, two three story, you know? Well, I mean, this is, this is an old building. No. There is nothing before us, so we don't know no. what's going to come of that. Um, no, well, just Mike by way of just to let Mike know that. he's to let Mike know he's not being innovative. That was one of the proposals for the Dead Mall, the uh, Mountain Farms Mall, is to tear it down and put apartments there as well. And, ah, okay, well, okay, and uh, but all of a sudden Walmart came in and it kind of rejuvenated it. So, well, anyways. So uh, Matt, one other thing, um, Mark Dunn is chairing a ad hoc working group. We have a district and local technical assistance grant from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to explore a 40R smart zoning district, which yep. would incorporate some of the mall related territories. And, um, at our next meeting, we are also going to have the our our contract planner from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who is also helping Mark Dunn's 40R committee. Um, so we can probably have a little more of a discussion about that. I don't know if you're familiar with 40R, but it's I a am. way to create some uh, develop some affordable housing, some other housing options. Uh, so that will be something we'll take up um, uh, in two weeks as yeah. well. Sounds like a good agenda. You're welcome you, to come back. Matt, are you familiar with the uh, executive, uh, what's it called on, on uh, Russell Street, the hotel? Uh, which site is this? In front, of the, uh, in front of the Mountain Farms Mall. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I am familiar uh, with that. The Econo Lodge. Yeah. Econo Lodge, excuse me. Yeah. Well, this is how the whole 40 yard thing started. <laughs> and and these pe people from Northampton, what's it called? CDC? Or is that? No, that's that's con city, Center for D Disease Control. Same thing. Valley, <laughs> Valley Community Development. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to put affordable housing in there and, uh, the ZBA, the, said uh, no. the ZBA said no, so they appealed to Boston, went around the town, yeah. and the the, uh, the uh, state agreed with them, or the court, the land court agreed with them, and now they don't have the funding to do anything there. But uh, it, it seems that the people in Boston really don't care what the people of Hadley think anymore, or how we operate. If they want something, they're going to force it through. And this is why I'm kind of leery about putting a 40R in because uh, then they got the foot in the, their foot in the door. So um, on another note, before we lose Matt, there's, uh, I don't know if you know, if it's one of your ancestors, there are uh, banners hanging on Middle Street. Yes. And one of them is a, one of the veterans is a Wachevich. I don't know. If yep. That's his grandfather. Uh, great uncle, in fact. Great yeah. uncle. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought that was Iggy. Uh, Barney is is my great uncle, or was uh, oh, was hanging okay. hanging on Middle Street. I love nice. that, by the way. I I loved yeah. seeing it. I was in town last weekend, and I liked seeing all of those banners up and down Forty Seven. It's really nice. I thought I was going to get a ticket for driving and stopping and driving and stopping because <laughs> I was trying to read them all. I'm like, I got to come back on my bike. Yeah, they're only. What seventy eight of them? 
but there's, there's at least two, there's, there's at least there's, 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 there's two. another wave of applications that are going to be coming forward um, later this summer to uh, people that missed the first round can can put <laughs> put their names in for the next round. There are at least two guys that were killed in Vietnam, Eddie Adams and uh, Kozlowski. I can't remember his first name, but I don't see them around any place. Yeah, I'm surprised Eddie Adams wasn't up there. Yeah. I thought he was. I, I thought I saw something for him. Okay. Maybe. There's a couple of, there's a couple of uh, veterans with the last name Bell. Joe Zagronik should be up there, but he said that he doesn't have a picture of him in uniform. <laughs> well, Eddie, no Eddie Zalot doesn't have a picture of him in uniform either. He was killed in World War II. He's got that's just his high school picture that they put up. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Same with Peter uh, Peter Martula. Okay, so do we want to take a look at zero point? Town Council had promised me that they would have a draft reply, but I just checked my uh planning board email and um i don't have anything from them but i'm happy to bring up the um the piece that i did and see if anyone has any comments to it sure, sure. i would like to review the draft i thought i thought it was great yeah. Bill. i got I something from lisa mead who came through yesterday it wasn't actually Okay, we'll put up what you what you got because I I went through it. I didn't see any attachments. Uh, I remember seeing something. I'm looking for where it is. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, maybe it was just your comments that you sent over, Bill. That's what I was looking at. Yeah, I, I sent them a second time. So uh, let me just get this up. Oh, where is it? It is zoning bylaw, proposed bylaws. And this okay. is. Okay, yeah, I was reading what you sent. I thought she had sent that. I'm sorry. Okay, no. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get this up and um, so let's see, what can I do here to maneuver it a little bit? Oh. Okay. So just for background for everyone, uh, at the annual town meeting, after months of discussion, we presented a zoning bylaw amendment to enable battery only storage facilities, um, but not in, except in the aquifer protection district. A, um, Zero Point had an application pending for a battery storage facility in the Aquifer Protection District. And um, we uh, adopted the bylaw knowing it would not extend to Zero Point in that location. They uh, had their attorney file a six page letter with the attorney general asking the attorney general's office to reject the Hadley zoning bylaw amendment because it was too restrictive. Um, and uh, the point we were making, a um, couple of points we were making, one is that it's not a prohibition of battery storage. It's an enablement of battery storage because the current bylaw does not extend to battery storage. So the that's the first bullet point. The current bylaw, in our opinion, and as ratified by the then town, former town council, is that um, 
battery only does not fall under the definition of uh, conversion of a light to electricity. It might store some battery, uh, some solar created electricity, but it may also, as Mark pointed out, uh, you know, how do you tell which cow is milk is in the uh, truck? Um, Can't tell the goats from the cows. Yes. Uh, second point is that we have previously approved battery storage as adjuncts to existing solar uh, systems, uh, solar panel fields, uh, although both of those were outside the aquifer, so the location was not an issue there. Uh, third point was to shift the burden of proof to uh, zero point that its installation could not be a threat to our aquifer. Since we have a single aquifer, uh, a problem in one place is a problem every place. And we raised the point that uh, uh, the perchlorate contamination took the Mount Warner well fields offline for years. Uh, we did a uh, little uh, verbal jujitsu here. Uh, the um, letter from counsel to the attorney general said that, that there would only be 350 acres available for development of battery only storage if this bylaw went into effect without accepting that, um, without accepting their methodology or agreeing to their number, we're saying, you say there's 350 acres available, just not where you want to be. Um, and then I also added today uh, a couple of extra points. Everything you've seen there from two weeks ago, I did also add that, um, and check my math, but I believe I did correctly. We we host we're already hosting seven large scale commercial solar installations. Um, we are not adverse to solar, and we do have approved battery storage at some of them. Um, and there were two other installations, uh, two, three other applications, uh, two of which were never built and one was withdrawn, uh, not to mention all the small scale ground mount. And the point that if the amendment fails to gain approval, the current bylaw would continue in effect. So zero points out of luck either way. And then I threw in this aside, uh, I actually just got a, uh, uh, I was talking with someone at Mass DAR, um, and I said that we're we're supporting other Commonwealth initiatives for preserving ag resources. We have a, so this is what uh, Chris said. There are approximate, approximately three thousand four hundred seventy four point seven acres of APR in Hadley. That, that's a pretty rough approximation, but okay, we'll. She only took it out to one decimal point. I'd hate to see um, it exacted. Um, she said, which makes the town a leader in APR acreage. Now, at one point, we were the leader in APR acreage. Um, so um, I may write back to her to pin her down on that. But uh, that what, yeah, one of the development constraints is we're doing our part to forward other objectives. The next part uh, is the um, the opinion of town council from 2022. Okay. Uh, the email uh, it's has was not marked as uh, litigation or privileged, so um, we'll share with that. Uh, and uh, the the, 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 the the other part was my question to town council. Uh, and then finally, we have included a map of the aquifer. Let me shrink that down a little. In your mention of our being friendly to solar, did you also mention the 
was it was it Wally Sikowski that had the dual use? The, no. The ag and solar together? I didn't mention that separately, but that is one of the seven. Okay. You know, that, was, that was zone. Joe Sikowski. Was, it was Joe. Okay. Yeah, that yep. that outline actually looks a lot like the Wicked Witch of the of the West. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> The Wicked Witch of Zero Point. Okay. So, um, I'll strike so that from the That's the reply that I, I drafted and sent in today, uh, the, the revised one. So um, I guess the question is, does anybody have any anything else that you want to add? Or... No, I, I think I, that's but, pretty... I think it was excellent, and I think yeah. you should send a bill some, to somebody, Bill, for your work. <laughs> East Street Common, 14. Right, East send it over here. <laughs> That's no, a very, cool. very good job, Bill. Thank you. I think, I okay. think you, well, thank you, you did all the important points. So. Okay, so we're good with that. I'll let Lisa know that we did discuss this. Um, I'm not sure what the time frame is that uh, she needs to get back to the attorney general on. I, I don't think it, I think as long as she tells them that she's working on something, uh, they'll, um, they'll extend it if they need to. But, um, okay, then I'll stop sharing. Uh, and as I said, I sent everyone a copy of this this morning. So, uh, you do have it. Um, Turn it off. Turn it off. Okay. Memorize it. There's a, there's a test text next test next meeting on it, Mike. Well, you know, I think I think Bill clearly took English eleven at Amherst. <laughs> I didn't actually, but really? it's, hard, it's hard not to write in yeah. science. Right. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, any okay. items, while we're, while we're on it, any items or any suggestions we should be looking at for the first uh, meeting? What was that, Jim, for the next meeting? I don't know. The fall town meeting, zoning articles, any, any, anything we, that we've been talking about that we should be looking at as far as uh, amending, we, adding, subtracting. Yeah, we talked about maybe uh, backing off on the number of paper copies required. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> site plan approval specifies something like 11 copies. And yeah. we don't need we, that much. I, I, what I was going to do is just amend that so that we don't mention how many copies and leave that in our regulations so we can change that as we need time to time. I'll take care of changing that because I think it's mentioned someplace else in a few of the uh, special permits what we require. And we're getting buried. We're killing a lot of trees unnecessarily. Especially yeah, with the electronic just, age. Yeah, we want to specify that we want an electronic filing and then we'll decide on a case by case basis um, how many paper copies we need. Right. So, Mr. Quinlan, you still want a paper copy or is an electronic copy okay for you? Electronic copy is fine. Okay. That will save one. Fire, Thank you. Yeah, the fire chief wants a paper copy. And I think the town clerk wants a paper copy because people come in to look at stuff. Mm -hmm. So we probably need about one, two, maybe like three or four, three, three, three paper copies. Yeah, probably three full size and maybe two. Uh, right, like eight and a half, one by 17. Yeah. Yep. yeah. But we can specify that in our regs. Yeah. Okay. So that's something I'll also talk to. Uh, I've been carrying this article here, uh, this placeholder item on uh, uh, 
do, 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 do. adopt standard conditions for special permits. Uh, I'll, I'll work with Kyle on that. Uh, I know that um, Ken Comia had given us some some versions. Uh, the idea is what I'd like to do is make it like an insurance policy. So the only piece that I have to go through at the meeting is the specifics of the project, you know, what what the plan set is, what the waivers are, uh, and then say uh, together with the standard conditions, and then that can be five more pages, but I don't have to read them all. Right. Uh, so we just have to adopt it for our regulations. Agreed. But I think that doesn't require town meeting action. That just requires uh, regulation action. And I know that uh, Kyle had sent us some materials uh, on the planning board rules and regulations and the permitting guide. And um, I think he had uh, had hoped that we might discuss it um, either at the last meeting or at this meeting. But I think uh, I'll just put in a plug to look through it so we can discuss it with him at the next meeting and flag any uh, anything you want to change. Are you looking for a brief update on the smart growth sure. steering committee? Sure. <clears throat> we had an, um, we would usually meet the night before here, before the planning board, but uh, because of Kyle's vacation schedule, we pushed it up to last Monday. And we basically worked on uh, refining the the first survey to go out to get public feedback. Um, and uh, Kyle will be back uh, on the 9th. I'll be away, but we'll try to communicate so that we can make the deadline for the next mailing uh, so that we can get a one page survey into the uh, next tax mailing. I don't yeah. know. It could be water, maybe. I'm not sure. We got a vice chair now to uh, uh, yeah. Ganotic. Andrew. Yep. Andrew Ganotic is the vice chair, so we can conduct business if it, if Mark's not available. Uh, and one it. of the reasons we wanted to meet with the uh, have the meeting of the uh, Affordable Housing Trust tonight is we wanted to see if the Affordable Housing Trust would front the cost of postage to send out some mailings to postcards to people, uh, and that's kind of I'm sure they would, but. Uh, that was something I discussed briefly with Molly when she called um, and I asked her to uh, get a, uh, put a number on that, uh, put a dollar value on that, okay. uh, which would be a function of uh, how many postcards you need, stock plus printing plus postage. Right. Um, and then we can, possibly take it up as an action item at the continuation of the meeting. All right. Okay. That would be good. Yeah, I'm not sure if the, uh, I think we were shooting for a, a one page insert. Um, and uh, Mike, you can correct me, but I think it we might have the survey actually on the paper, but there would also be a QR code if you prefer to. Yeah. It and if you go to the online, then there would be resources that you know you could look at to help inform you on your answers. So uh, yeah, it probably would be a water reading because the tax mailing should have gone out yesterday. <laughs> I think that just went, yeah. All right. And there were, the, the survey needed some work. Okay. Any uh, other update? Uh, I'll just add that um, actually the reason I uh, wrote uh, 
uh, mass DAR was that I, I was not following all the meetings, but I was reading the materials that Kyle had presented. And uh, he, I noticed that he had a couple of charts about land use and had no had nothing in the APR block. So apparently the select uh, the assessors do not track APR land separately from other ag land in chapter or just in agriculture. So uh, that's what inspired me to get the um, the um, actual acreage figure, and I wrote both Mark and uh, Kyle just to to say that uh, you know there's there is an answer to that question. Okay. And we also uh, on the Smart Committee we had a question from one of our members about. How many actual affordable units we have in town, as opposed to if you have 25% and you count the whole 100%. And so I turned to Bill and Bill did a bunch of uh, gathering of numbers and uh, I've forgotten, Bill, was it, it was close to 300 or? Uh, oh, no, or that was just one of the, I can't remember. It, uh, well, I can tell you what the, uh, inventory says, but it's a little misleading because uh, uh, what was that? Uh, I know I have it in here. Affordable housing inventory. Um, Uh, this is the 2023, which apparently does now reflect, um, and we have 277, um, inventory units of affordable housing. Well, that's got to be a lot more than 10% of it's it's 11.93. But, yeah. but of those affordable units that are on the inventory, uh, some of them are uh, the, uh, the group homes for uh, DMH and the disability ones. Yeah. So they are, uh, they count as affordable, but they're not available. And likewise, Golden Court is restricted, is both age restricted and except that you can also be uh, disabled. So uh, it's not that just anybody can walk up there and say, I'd like to rent a unit. Bill, I didn't, I, know, I didn't know Jack Yushko was disabled. <laughs> he's dead. Bless his heart, he's dead now. But he was old. He was old he's enough. Old. He was, he was old. But, uh, he got in on age. Okay. But that's yeah. one of the issues they're having over there. That they have, they have seventy-year-olds and disabled forty-year-olds uh, who are on sort of clashing schedules. Hmm. Bill, I went to an APR meeting uh, last year. Hadley's APR, we have 160 parcels, 3,326 acres of APR land. We now have 3,347. How much? 30, 30, a little bit more. <laughs> so that was a couple of years ago. Okay, right. so this is your up-to-date one. All right. Yeah, I don't think I sent uh, Chris's email around to everybody. I'll uh, I'll do that. But uh, yeah, very good information. Now we've got to just prod town council and and see what the AG says. That's just one of our many things that are before us. So oh, we owe ourselves another paycheck. Yes. Need a, we, yeah, when I put in the uh, pay for the for the month of for the this this quarter, um, we found out that I never put a, a 
request in for the third quarter. So we've been paid for three or four quarters and need a motion to approve a stipend for the final fourth quarter of $575. I'll make that motion to approve. And I will second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, roll call vote. Done, aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximoski, aye. Terzinski, aye. Joseph Grodnick, aye. Motion is unanimous and passes. Thank you very much. Uh, now, in this case, because Kale is away, if you, this one you can send to Linda. Yes, thank you. Because Already been we, done. Okay. Yes, I was. I made it before the end of the month. I hope. I hope she got it and processed it, because uh, I was told that I could. I could. I could submit a stipend request on my own. But I said, well, in this case, I didn't. I wouldn't do it for the first one because of the nature of this one. I submitted it on Thursday or Friday. As soon as you told me, we missed one. Okay. So well, maybe just send. Just do do, uh, do an email to her again. Just okay. saying that we voted it now. Okay. Very Just good. to let let you know, uh, after forty nine years on the planning board, our accumulation of our pension plan or my pension plan is three hundred and fifty four dollars. So. Wow. <laughs> well, let's get that next quarter in there then. That's right. <laughs> Is, is that enough to buy a round for the house at Joe's on a slow night? That's right. <laughs> should have, of, should have been Coke, on the Hampshire. Of Coke should have, only. Should have well, been on been, the Hampshire. You've been, you've been drawing it down, haven't you? They've been, they've been paying you out of it? No, they, they keep asking, am I still employed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so as long as you're employed, they don't draw, they don't draw it down? They don't give no. you a check? That's right. No. Oh, wow. So am I the only member who pays to be on this board? I mean, because my other, my other phone is provided by the state, I had to, I had to, I had to get another phone service according to the state ethics. Well, Mark that's, also too. That's uh, $40 a month. So 480, I'm paying $80 a year to, to serve with you gentlemen. And Joe. Mike, uh, I mean, Mark, when uh, I, I incorporated my practice many years ago, I formed, you know, so I could put a few more dollars away. Uh, I got an order from the Eternal Revenue. You have <clears throat> two pension plans, funds. It's not legally allowed. <laughs> and one was the state. The one, so. Uh, you can't make this stuff up, Joe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, and the thing is, if we we all have a small state pension fund, and if you draw, start drawing from your state pension fund, they will subtract that from the social security. So you don't gain anything out of the deal. <laughs> That's why they call it a, a smart contribution. Yeah. It's, not smart. it's not smart for us. It's Smart for them. I think, I think we digress. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, anyways. Um, I have nothing else. I'll second the motion. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Make sure nobody else. Agree. I have nothing else. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Anything, Tom? Mr. Quinlan? Good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Motion second. second. All in favor? Mr. Dunn? Dunn, aye. Why are I? Maximoski, aye. Sarzinski, aye. The Grodnik, aye. Motion is unanimous. Meeting is history. Thank